Hi guys, Dr. Pelto here. Uh, I know a lot of people, they have a procedure we do in the office called a matrixectomy, which is where we kill the, the edge of the nail. Uh, today I want to go over a little bit of, of how to take care of that and what you should be aware of if you do the procedure, what could be some possible risks. That's what we're going to look at today. Okay, so let's look here. This is a, a matrixectomy uh, kind of initial example. What I want to show you here is for a matrixectomy, we tend to do it if someone has an ingrown toenail that comes back multiple times. It gets red and infected, so maybe first time, second time, you might just remove the edge. But if it keeps coming back, we'll do this matrixectomy. Um, other people that don't have an infection, they might have a callus that's built up in the edge, and we might do a matrixectomy for that as well. Um, I kind of explain it this way, you know, third time and you're out. Okay, so if we do a, a simple procedure uh, a couple of times where we take out the edge of the nail, uh, if that doesn't work, we actually take the edge out and we kill the root. Now, this is the example. It's where we take a Q-tip and we put it in the nail edge. Um, what type of chemical should you use? It really depends on your doctor. We used to use a phenol, but we found that the phenol expired too soon and uh, it, we had to switch it frequently. So now what we use is something called sodium hydroxide in our office. Um, what's the, the main risk that can happen afterwards would be an infection in this thing. This is called a spicule. So sometimes we actually repeat uh, a matrixectomy procedure and remove this little spicule thing. You guys can see this thing right here um, at, the, at the nail nail base here. Um, this is my real simple drawing of what to look at if you, if you have a, a spicule, okay? Uh, or if you have a, a matrixectomy you need. We take a little Q-tip, we put it back here, we remove the edge of the nail, and see these little circles? Those represent kind of the growth cells. And, and kind of to explain why that spicule or that piece can grow back is because we put this in here and we try to put it on all those little cells and move it around for a certain period of time and then we flush it. But sometimes those cells can, can hide or you know we don't get it in there all the way or there's a piece of nail or some other tissue in the way and that little spicule can grow. Okay, so that's kind of the, the issue that it's one of the things that can happen with a matrixectomy. Um, I, the, after the procedure, I always like to tell people, so when you have this in the office, um, after the procedure, you're going to have pain maybe for four to six hours. Um, after the anesthesia, anesthesia wears off, you're going to have no pain, but then it will start. If your bandage is soiled, it's probably because you're doing too much, meaning if it bleeds through, you're doing too much, put more bandage on top of it. Leave the first bandage for 24 hours. Uh, and then keep it clean and washed well with, with soap and water. If if there's increased redness, pain, or your concern, call the office. But I want to go over a lot of the things today that will put people at ease. What are some of the normal normal signs? And then um, we use an Amerigel kit um, in, in our office, or you can soak it twice a day in salt water. Now, just be aware, it's going to take three to four weeks. Like a typical nail takes a couple of days, three, four or five days when you pull out the edge, it, it's fine. But with this matrixectomy, because we're putting a chemical in there and everyone responds differently to this chemical. Some people don't have any issues and others that are really sensitive skin, they get really bad things. And we're going to show some of those pictures right now. So uh, the first thing that can happen is after a matrixectomy, you could have some tissue buildup at the base. Now this is something your doctor, this is an emergency, is not an emergency. Your doctor will take care of this. Sometimes I've seen some tissue buildup in there. Uh, that's something that can happen just because when you pull out tissue, uh, new tissue can grow. This is very common, something like this. Now, this patient has really ugly nails, but um, on normal people, what happens is all this drainage right here, this is from the chemicals. So we put chemicals in both sides. This has a lot of drainage. That's normal. That's why you see the doctor in a couple weeks afterwards, and we clean out all that drainage. That drainage is normal. If this can't drain, it's kind of like a backed up drain in your house it's going to get all red right here. And that's because the drainage can't drain out. That's where even if you're using the Amerigel kit, you may want to soak it with salt water so that drainage doesn't get back there. So this redness is normal. This type of redness, this type of swelling and things like that, that's normal, okay? That dried blood. Uh, you could develop a blister. So you can see right where this was in the edge and this is where the chemical was. That created a blister with the skin sloughing off. Once again, that is normal. Redness, that type of skin sloughing is normal. Uh, also, uh, swelling. This is something that I find there can be swelling at the base of the nail and swelling on the side of the nail. And if the doctor, your doctor doesn't trim any extra nails, sometimes this skin, usually when we do the procedure, I just want to show you here, we get, leave a big gap. See that big gap right there? But what happens is when there's swelling, 
that tissue swells up and it can push against the nail and actually cause another ingrown toenail or pain or irritation. So sometimes you, you take a little bit more nail. Uh, the reason why would we do this? Well, we don't take much nail in females because we don't want to have their toenail look like they have a diving board. Okay. You don't want to take a real big piece. Otherwise they have like a real thin, narrow piece. They don't like that. And um, that's why we, that you have to just be careful. Sometimes I can rub in. What I tend to find is I take a little bit more here and a little bit less here, and I might trim in the edge of the nail so that doesn't happen. Uh, another example, this looks really red, but once again, all due to the chemical. So if you do both sides, both sides are going to be red. There's a little blistering. This is normal. Um, that's what I see a lot of the times. If you're concerned of infection, certainly you can call the doctor. One thing that we find some patients, they do that they go to like the emergency room and they're not familiar with this and they think it's an infection. They'll give you an antibiotic, you know, but usually this isn't infected. Usually this is a chemical burn. Um, once again, drainage in the nail edge, total nail that was done, the drainage that's on there, that's all normal. Uh, once it starts to heal, um, it's been, this has been probably three or four weeks. It's going to develop this kind of the scab on top that once again is normal. And this callusing in the edge is normal. Um, a couple of things that are not normal. So a really bad red toe with redness going up the foot, that's not normal. What I would recommend is with marking plan, you kind of mark where that redness is. And if that redness goes beyond there, that's a concern of infection. Um, if someone has poor blood flow, diabetes, things like that, those can be issues. So we tend to be very cautious and do this on patients that have good, good blood flow. Another thing that could happen is incomplete removal. So sometimes when you're in there, you remove it, you think you remove it, but sometimes there can still be a little piece of nail. Here's a little piece that's still in there. And that needs to be taken out and retreated because this little piece, if it's left in there and you put the chemical in, many times that chemical isn't, isn't working great. So those are my thoughts uh, for um, doing uh, ingrown toenails. And uh, once again, this is some, some tips uh, under this video or at the end here. I'm going to show you, share a little course I have in ingrown toenails with that. There's a lot of good videos and a little booklet for you. Okay. Once again, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're gonna find a few links here I'd like to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.